is fine. Uh, books and uh, movies form a very important part of my life. And I wouldn't be wrong to say that, that they form an integral part of every Indian. Whether you like it or you don't like it, you just can't avoid it. There are three, four things in this country, uh, cricket, politics, and cinema. If you a stone, these days it will hit a writer. <laughs> uh, and why not? You know, I mean, it's one of the oldest continuous living civilizations that we have. It's an amalgamation of uh, so many cultures. So the more the merrier. Uh, I think what we also need to understand, and I, I keep thinking about this uh, in the last few years, that we don't understand the power that we have as an audience, and as a writer, or as content creator. The democratization of uh, media, which has happened so much in the last 10 years, has made all of us ambassadors in our own right. And the power that we give, we don't understand. It. And when we don't understand this power, we don't understand the responsibility that is upon us. So today I wanted to generally talk about something which we consume, we are a part of, we are contributors. And if unaware, then we become what the KGB and the communist ones called useful idiots. Uh, I'm talking about soft power. And, uh, the more we grow as a nation and the more we grow as a people, uh, it will come to a point where we will have to understand that and we will have to use it to, to protect ourselves largely and to protect our way of thinking. I mean for writers, if you, we've always had this, you know, it's the most uh, liberating feeling to write a book. You're sitting in a room, you're doing nothing and you can imagine anything. So when I used to write films, I used to write a scene that 5,000 strong army standing at the gates challenging this lone hero. And the producer would look at that and say, ah, paanch hara to boss hara you know, kaan se laoge? I think you should reimagine this, you know, you should change the period. So they hired me to write a period drama. And then they say, oh, thoda, you know, let's, let's reimagine the hero somewhere else. And that is where the series of compromise starts. And when you start those series of compromise, you must also realize that somebody else is calling the shots. Now, we keep, we keep uh, thinking about cultures because films, books, and this kind of content becomes our first inroad into them. And what we don't understand, or what we try and not understand, because at the end of the day, you know, this is what happens when we start thinking that we are not important enough. We start thinking that this is something which is just there and should be badi baat nahi. But the way, what, what is soft power? Soft power is a term which essentially everybody would be aware started coming out in the uh, late 80s, early 90s. It was a, a political analyst in the US, Joseph Nye Jr., who termed it as that there are three ways of getting things done by a nation. Either you force or you negotiate or you create an atmosphere where you just put yourself out there and think it. And that is what America has been doing for a very long time. That is what Russia has been doing for a very long time. That is what any country which has a strong literary background or cinematic background does. We don't understand that, that how we end up consuming it. And today, uh, what we consume also defines what we put out there. So a lot of what I am writing, I've written five books. I've done a fair bit of television. One of my shows uh, was a legal drama which became the first Indian drama to be nominated for an Emmy back in early 2000s. So it was a show called Siddhant, which is Delhi Crime won that award this uh, last year. Yeah. So it, it, I've fa seen both sides of the trajectory, writing and consuming. And what happens is that we don't understand the power that a, a single word can be. I am standing here in front of you because of what I've consumed. I, once I was mocking my mother, I mean, she, she became a very big fan of Bills and Boons and I used to tell her, you have no taste, <laughs> you have no class. And she said, all the class came to you because it jumped a generation, because your grandfather was a poet. That's why it came to you. I had nothing to do. So, uh, messaging is, is something that content creators, writers, filmmakers always do. And messaging is something which can be a very, very powerful tool, very, very dangerous tool. Uh, you just said something about the heart, and there's an old Neil, uh, Neil Young song, get to the heart of the matter, because it's the heart that matters the most. Mm -hmm. So, 
अब आप देखिए हाउ मेनी ऑफ यू हैव सीन एनिमल व्हिच केम आउट अ फ्यू मंथ्स अगो ओके सो देयर हैज बीन अ लॉट टॉक अबाउट एनिमल एंड यू नो राइटली और रॉंगली दैट्स फॉर अस टू जज एंड अस टू फिगर आउट इट्स अ वेरी वायलेंट फिल्म इट इट डज इट ग्लोरीफाई वायलेंस आई वुडंट से सो बिकॉज़ देयर आर फिल्म्स विद ग्लोरीफाई वायलेंस नो डज इट स्टाइलाइज वायलेंस ऑफ कोर्स इट डज इट इज इट अ फिल्म मेकर्स कॉल टू डू दैट ऑफ कोर्स इट इज so there's a very interesting bit in animal which kind of makes you think that what is the filmmaker trying to say here there's a scene in that film where uh, the protagonist a uh, guy called ran vijay vijay singh has thought of a fancy killing machine gun and he has asked an arms designer to design it and deliver it so in the throes of the action where people are killing each other and, and god knows what is happening This guy shows that machine gun, and there's a character called Freddie Partin, an uh, interesting choice of name, Maratha name, who's talking to a Sikh, Ranveer, and these are the two of the greatest warrior races which have protected India. Since you can recall, uh, Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj, Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj, they were the ones who saved humanity at different times, and it's very interesting how the director, who's an Andhra. puts these two cultures together and takes it one notch higher okay there's a lot of talk about uh, atmanirbharta these days and right to so india is is a puzzling market right? and freddy patel and arms in the year says thought in delhi designed in bangalore assembled in maharashtra totally made in india atmanirbhar bharat now a popular film which will probably make 1000 crores is being talked about for all reasons good or bad but it uses its power to put across a message so subtly and so beautifully two great warrior classes coming together joining hands a, a punjabi folk song playing in the background and a modern marathi song playing in the background with bold proclamation made in it's a completely indian film indian film industry we may not understand the power it has it is the one of the two industries which survived only only hong kong and indian film industry survived only but now when we think of cinema and when we think of soft power and when we think of books and soft power we don't think of india in that light so right we think of countries like the former soviet union 1917 after the revolution the first thing that vladimir lenin did was that he nationalized the film production company in russia and he said it's the most powerful tool uh, connecting to the people because it speaks to the masses who don't go to museums who don't understand things and when you want to get something done right give it in the hands of a woman so he made his wife the director <laughs> okay and the first thing that the russians did was that they started producing these new streets many of us would remember new streets used to play in cinema halls which used to tell what is happening around the country and around the world and then then it put together a bunch of people and gave them three or four books one was the communist manifesto the other was marx's das kapital and told them that convert this into material which the plebi and the proletariat will understand and in the early 1970s or 1920 kya aspas there was a film made called battleship potemkin there is an iconic scene in the film which is called the odessa step scene you cut and you in 1989 mein brian de palma made a film with robert de niro called untouchables he recreated the entire scene shot for shot and it deal it the same part so what it tells you is that images a uh, cinema books writing literature if they come together they become a potent force and this is something which we have been consuming we all like raj kapoor we all think highly of him but at the same time we also think that this man the eternal joker ye karega soft power ye kisi ka dimag change karega but raj kapoor has done more to uh, populate the idea of india back then than anybody else you look at a film like shri jaso bees there's a song mera juta hai japani usme ek line hai badhte jaye hum sehlani jaise ek darya toofan that's the complete socialist ideology put into one line how do we know that kashmir was a place 
जहां पे जैसे जमीन पे पैराडाइज कहते थे वी फॉट फाइव वॉर्स देर एंड नॉट अ सिंगल हिंदी फिल्म एवर टॉक अबाउट द वॉर्स इन पॉपुलर कल्चर ऑफकोर्स इज अ फिल्म ऑन वॉर चेतन आनंद मेड इज वॉर फिल्म देव फिल्म विच लुकटेड सेवेंटी वन वॉर but scratch back your uh, memory and you it will be very difficult for you to disassociate shami kapoor yahoo jungle and all that from kashmir whereas there was not a single story spoken about the people there the troubles that they went through either side up i'm not saying that you should have only shown hindus and not the muslims or just the dogras and not the sikhs i'm not saying that but you you understand the path and this is the path that these images and these texts map on us and today what are we doing today we are looking at our cinema our writing we are somewhat saying that is it powerful is it not powerful just because of uh, uh, we have access to publishers today just because we have access to writing today uh, in the last 10 years i have written five books and i have started thinking that it is become more difficult where is the number of books have increased the number of readers has, has increased India is the only country where the printed word, uh, newspapers, magazines, books have increased in the world. It's the only country where e-books have not taken off the way they took off back then. But yet you hear people from our generation, I mean, you know, it's the point where I can say our generation, <laughs> are lamenting that people don't read. So the whole idea of of content of consumers of people or of people like us or of festivals like this. the the platform that these festivals give us should only make you realize the power of uh, the word and the power that you wield as a as a consumer and you also are a creator because at the at end of the day it's a fine thing to sit in a room and like i said 5000 logo kahaniyan likho theek hai and then the producer will cut it down but at the end of the day you're still writing for somebody now when you look at cinema i i find the, the whole world of cinema so fascinating but on the one hand you have hollywood where the navy uh, or the cia will fund a project uh, how many of you remember top gun in the mid 80s it increased two things it revived a brand called rayban rayban was completely out it revived rayban to the extent that almost 285% growth or there about rayban business the other thing it did was it increased the number of young people joining navy as naval pirates because of tom cruise and many years later uh, thanks to the internet or declassification of files you would realize that much of this was designed so now you go back and ask how much of this was designed then you look at rocky 85 rocky 4 where rocky fights the russian it's at the peak of the cold war and the messaging goes that the russian has state of the art equipment to train but the american the great rocky uh, red white and blue all american guy hamburgers and beef and meat and all that has the what we call the desi tarika of training and he beats ivan in the end ye yeah, for america okay 3 years later 1988 rambo 3 the film ends with a citation that says this film is dedicated to the brave afghan mujahideens who are fighting the russian invaders so we all enjoyed stallone in in rambo and we all had posters but what was rambo doing in the film rambo was helping the mujahideen take on the russians because we are at the peak of the cold war how many of you uh, still enjoy scorpions uh, winds of change there's a fascinating theory out there which says that the cia wrote that song got that song written and uh, sent an american a uh, rock band and a couple of rock bands to russia to perform in the late 80s and exactly a year or year and a half after that the war comes out so are we also in the same game yes we were but for reasons not of our own should we be in that game today of course we should be in that game i mean india is is growing <coughs> india is 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 the fastest growing big economy in the world today so uh We are in info. We are in infosys, and you know all of us have have some kind of an entrepreneurial streak in us. Imagine challenging somebody who's nicely perched at the top. Will they be nice to you? Will they be kind enough to you? आपके पास एक बाल्टी है, you have to fill that bucket. You need to throw something out, 
to make space to get the better stuff in. So this is where our whole idea of soft power becomes very important. I'll quickly give you a few examples. Uh, how many of us think of Pathans as large-hearted people? Almost everyone. And why do we think that? Cliche? And how did that cliche come from? Where did it come from? Cinema? Kabuli Wala? Ravindranath Thakur? So Gurudev Ravindranath Thakur writes something. It becomes a film. And we all start thinking that, and then Sher Khan from Ranjit, you know. Imagine somebody else playing that role and not Pran, and you will not have that kind of effect. Then look at Dharmatma, a, a film by Feroz Khan. Feroz Khan and Raj Kapoor, two of the biggest, for the reason of arguments here, jokers. Because, you know, Raj Saab, when he broke up with Nargis and Nargis shifted out, there's, there's a very nice, nice to leak, I said, but there's a... <laughs> There's a very uh, much documented story that Nargis's driver used to come every day to clear baby G's and that's what her pet name was, baby G's makeup room. And Raj Saab used to take one item, touch it, look at it for half an hour and then give it. So shoes, sadis, everything. This guy being a soft power uh, genius, i just give you an example of Sri Charsodis. He's a guy who made Jis uh, Desh Me Ganga Vahiti Hai. He's a guy Jis Desh Me Ganga Vaiti has a line, Yaha Thode Me Guzara Ho Jata Hai. Why? Because for whatever reasons, whatever market policies we had at that time, there was not enough. So cinema has celebrated uh, poverty to such an extent that you start feeling guilty if you're not that. Thoda hai, thode ki zarurat hai. Kyun hai? Jagjit Singh has a very famous ghazal, Ab Me Rashan Ki Kataro Me Khada Nazar Aata Hoon. Kyun? Who decided? I asked my mother, I mean even today my mother says, Oh, you know back then we used to cook food on the new Nutan stove. And she's happy about that. So who made that a notion? Khans, Kapoor's. They did it. Why? For whatever reasons. Oh, well, I don't know if they were getting funding or they were not getting funding or the audience was not smart enough. But it's a very simple fact that you need 30 years to convert some thought into something totally different. You look at what uh, Ziyal Haq did with Pakistan or what Bhutto did or what uh, uh, Truman did. It, in fact, it's a very interesting quote. I just was reading it in the morning. During the beginning of the Cold War, there is a quote by President Truman who says, there is a right way and a wrong way to fight communism. The administration is doing it in the right way and the sensible way. Our attack on communism is embodied in a positive three-fold program. We are working quietly but effectively without headlines or the hysteria against communist subversion in this country. Whether it appears that we are doing this or not, only time will tell. So all your... Uh, TV programming, all your packaging, everything out there comes to you in this in this fashion. So, and, and the, this is done by people who will appear nonchalant on the face of it. I mean, look at some some actor like Ranveer Kapoor, Ranveer Singh, okay, energetic and crazy. He'll do something very. He will he will wear a sari and come to you. I mean, I don't have a problem in men wearing sari. I mean, you know, there's freedom to do whatever you want to do. But really, but look at the power that he has in changing some mindset. And this is exactly what is, what is the need today. And I keep telling this because uh, if we don't understand what we are up against, it's very easy for the other person to come and just take over. And I have been a victim to this. I mean, I've, I remember writing an article because Every hero in Hindi film started sporting a mooch. I, like an idiot, wrote my weekly. Uh, that was the last column I wrote. After that, my editor said that maybe you need to do something else in life. <laughs> <laughs> because many will India with some mooch. Lady. So you really don't know how and when these things come and start working on your brain. And this, I, I keep coming back. I have a very, very nice story of Feroz Khan to share. Uh, Feroz Khan is a guy who did more. <coughs> <clears throat> to put messaging out there. And this is the guy who I had the good fortune of, he's one of my childhood ideas. I had a good fortune of meeting him once because the building I was living in in Bombay had his office. 
and this was way past his prime. So I met him once and he said, 7 p.m. evening, come home, get something warm. I said, Bombay something warm? But you know, I mean, who am I to, to I have to talk to you about the baby, so I land up there in a t-shirt and what do I see? In his Bandra home, okay, in his living room, there are 27 air conditioners working at the same time. You know why? Because Feroz Khan is wearing a Stetson hat, a jacket, boots, has a fireplace in the middle of the living room and he's having a cigar and roasting marshmallows there. And he says, my boy, this is how we do it the best. On service, yeah. And then these are the guys who are the smartest out there. You don't know how they will change the conversation, how they will change the discourse. He went to Afghanistan. He is the last filmmaker to actually capture the Bamiyan Buddhas intact on film. In 1975 when he was shooting Dharmatma, there is a sequence in that song Kya Khoop Dikti Ho, where you can see the Bamiyan Buddhas in the background. And uh, he wanted Hema Malini to go. Because he, she was the biggest star, bigger than him. And Hema Ji's mother would not allow him. <laughs> Amma. Amma wouldn't allow him. And a lot of people didn't know that Feroz Khan hails from Bangalore, so he could speak Kannada and Tamil very good. So he meets Jaya Malini, Hema Ji's mother. And he just says one thing, which is, I come back to the Pathan analogy. He says, Amma, now I'm a Pathan. I'm a Pathan. Send your daughter, she'll be safe with you. And Mummy Ji, who would not allow Hema Ji to go to the next studio, happily packs her up to Kabul <laughs> for three weeks. So that is Firoz Khan's soft power, and this is the audience's soft power. So uh, I won't take much of your time, but it's been a great pleasure. And uh, I keep repeating this, that we are all ambassadors here. Uh, whether you are writing or reading, whether you are making films or whether you are consuming films. So please uh, let us understand the power that we wield and uh, not get, not become useful idiots. Uh, I, I come back to sum that up. KGB used to have this term called useful idiots. They take people from within the group, make them feel important, they propagate some idea and then when the discourse changes, they find themselves out of job. That is what happened to a lot of filmmakers. Suddenly when things changed, uh, 91 when the wall came down, somebody met Kefi Azmi and Kefi Azmi was one of the founding members of Ipta and progressive poets and what have you and he said that Kefi Azmi was in his garden and he was standing on the chair and looking dramatically at the ground and they came and said that you know I mean he's not that old to have lost his mind so this gentleman says Ki, kya ho gaya, Baba? and Kefi Azmi says that Samajh nahi aara jis zameen pe me pichle pachas saal se khala tha. Kaha nahi. That was the God that failed. So even artists become redundant after a while. Uh, audiences never do. So let's remember that. If there's any question, uh, I would love to answer that. But uh, thank you so much. So sir, one... Yeah, please go ahead. Do I go ahead? Yeah, so uh, how do you envision the future in terms of, you know, we're all worried about AI and the digital turn, etc, etc, which of course happened long ago, but how do you envision the future in terms of soft power? Will this engagement with the digital media see an increase in soft power in terms of the common man like all of us here or will it see an increase in the soft power of the state and will this soft power become a hard power as many people now say that things are moving towards a harder version of the soft power of the state I'd like to know your ideas on that a very interesting question, ma'am. I curated uh, the content for the Prime Minister's Museum, and uh, which is opened in Delhi, and it, it showcases all Indian Prime Ministers. And we have tried to, it's one of the most modern museums in India. It uses technology. We have hologram, we have uh, things there where you can sit and get a photo click with the Prime Minister. You can walk with the Prime Minister. You stand in front of a green screen. 
you can choose your prime minister like i want to walk with uh, shastri ji so you are walking in front of the parliament and the, you get a video on your phone which says which shows you that you are walking with lal bahadur shastri you get a signed letter from the prime minister of your choosing with a message that dear gautam uh, remember that there is no uh, substitute for hard work regards atul bihari vajpayee how many of these letters do you have <laughs> <laughs> it's a paid thing i'm very happy when people pay for it okay. uh, but, uh, so we will see now that the point that i come to it's the museum has been in the making for 2 years and we've just uh, opened uh, the prime minister modi museum here. so in the 2 years the level of technology has gone up but the uh, the basis of what actually storytelling is and i'm answering your ai question only from a cultural point of view that doesn't change at the end of the day a good story remains a good story now will this proliferation of uh, technology increase which will of course lead to ai increasing which will of course lead to people becoming more a, a different kind of content creator ergo soft power ambassadors increasing yes it will the technology which was available 20 years ago to a select few is the same technology that you and i are using today i make a film a graduate from film school makes a film or say steven spielberg makes a film we are using the same cameras so that is the level it has changed now but what spielberg brings is something that spielberg brings so will this use of uh, ai change things of course it will change things but i go back to a point saying that it is for us to understand how we can take advantage of that today i have as a writer i take about 30% less time to do something which i was taking 5 years ago now the thing is that what am i doing in that 30% of the time i am very guilty of doing nothing but there are people who are utilizing that that 30% of the time will this change the way soft power looks i don't think so because uh, the rules of the game of the terms of engagement are as such but there will always be this demarcation so uh, once we graduate from one point to the other we are either in that category or this category so both the categories are not going to come together the soft power will change i have a feeling that uh, things have a tendency of repeating themselves and there's a 30 year cycle uh, the rotary dial phone is something which a lot of us covet now a keyboard or something but a lot of us are looking forward to i think there will come a time where the old and the new will coexist and uh, the freedom or the ease of life that we have will flummox us more to do what with the extra time i don't think that the soft power will harden to such an extent because uh, people are very smart uh, there will be a lot of halla gulla hoga uh, people will shout people will do things but ultimately somehow uh common sense prevails sometimes it takes longer uh, sometimes it doesn't take that long but i am of the firm belief that technology will become more accessible to people and after the it's <coughs> like that whole thing when i joined college my mother was very worried she said are you got to what we do with this kind of freedom kya hua kuch bhi nahi hua a few we bumped a few classes ha wo matlab There are two sides to the story. <laughs> so, <laughs> but uh, his experiences have also landed him where he is today. So, uh, and you know, I think every generation has to go through that. So, this is our. We we may not have wars in that kind of sense. Uh, we may have more covert wars today. We may be fighting a war right now. We don't even know we fight wars in four one forty or two forty characters. But um, I I don't think it will come to a point where hard. tactics will be decided by soft power wo jo hard hai wo hard hi rahega but soft will become it will become more interesting that's what i think thanks for a clear answer uh, yeah i just wanted to comment that sometimes soft power is exercised quite unintentionally and uh, the three idiots movie is a classic example of that i lived in uh, shanghai in china when the two cities and it became a super duper hit in china every person like the film because it they identified completely with uh, the main theme yet we never really built upon that opportunity that came from there so sometimes it's quite unintentional we don't even know 
how much influence we can exert through this. Power. That's true, but I don't think that the uh, what we did or did not do with that might have been unintentional or intentional. But there are no accidents in life or art. So three idiots doing good in China, I think, was a completely packaged plan, really? delivered thing. Because it, it doesn't work like this. It's, it's uh, films are a very expensive medium, mm -hmm. and uh, for a nation like China to have that kind of a film come out there, and I mean, there are stories which say that uh, Amir Khan is a bigger star than James Bond. There, so I half of me believes it, half of me doesn't believe it. You know, because I don't think there's any place in the world where more people will know Amir than they know Tom Cruise. Of course, India, you count karlo, so 1.4 billion people, but 1.4 billion people, <laughs> say, log, they, they would be knowing Tom Cruise. And especially after Tom came to India with Anil Kapoor and hung out with Taj Mahal and you know in that stupid uh, Mission Impossible version. But I think uh, we we may not have focused on that potential as much because there were bigger battles to be fought. Uh, the luxury of choosing soft power comes when you have established or secured yourself in other ways. And I think this is the period where. India will actually take a turn and whatever was happening intentionally or unintentionally for say the popularization of Raj Kapoor, Dilip Kumar and Dev Saab into Nehruvian idea, then Shastri's idea. So this is also a very interesting thing that I keep, I don't know why it misses a lot of people. Every Prime Minister has some film star intentionally or unintentionally interpreting what they are doing. And the first three four are very clear. So you have Dilip Kumar, Devanand, Raj Kapoor and the second generation of the stars say a Manoj Kumar or a Rajinder Kumar emulating whatever Panditji's idea was you know and you look at 63 when he dies and look at what happens to Dilip Kumar after that Dilip Kumar has only two big films after 63 Panditji's death all his hits are before that he only has Ram or Sham after that and none of his films work after that and the two three stars which who become popular with uh, Lal Bahadur Shastri, Asha Parekh, uh, Sadhana, Manoj Kumar, Dharmendra. And this is the time when the 65 war happens. And then you look at Indira Gandhi, larger than life, and you look at Rajesh Khanna and Amitabh Bachchan coming at that time. So it's a very interesting thing that how, was it subtle, was it planned, was it unplanned, am I retrofitting it? I mean, but it's a very interesting way to look at how culture heals its way and you know works it to us. I have a question. Uh, I okay, please carry on. After this we'll accommodate just one more question. And uh, I just have one request please. I know we're in a very high tech Infosys setup <laughs> and everybody has a luxury of mics in front of them. But if you could just raise up your hands it would be able to you know, be able to just manage it a little better. Okay? Puja and then we'll have Mr. Arora and I think then later we Gautam is here, I'm lunch here. and all, so we can all interact. We can hound him then. <laughs> <laughs> That's my question. I agree with you, uh, Gautam, when you say that it's the audience that empowers, you know, the speaker or the writer or the content creator. But my question to you is, when you say that cinema has such a profound impact on, I would say humanity, because people the world over get impacted, don't you think our Indian cinema is kind of propagating violence in a very negative way, especially in the last maybe 5-10 years? Don't you think that has increased the portrayal of violence in our movies? And um, why would you? Why do you think it has? It's probably justifying, not propagating. Yeah, justifying. In See, a way. Uh, many of us have accepted the idea that cinema reflects society. I think it's the other way around. Cinema dictates society. Uh, there have been far more violent films. If you look at Japanese pink cinema, if you look at uh, the horror films of Korea, or if you just look at the Hong Kong films of the 80s, the violence was visceral. There is a film called uh, Thriller. It's called Thriller the Violent Film. It was made by Bergman's assistant. He is the only film he made. It's a mind-boggling film when it comes to violence. So are we justifying violence? I don't think so. Because justification of violence comes to a point where you come out thinking that I want to become this. There are very few films where you will have violence and very little redemption in the end. Many can say Hindi films or at least Indian films, there will be very few 
where you'll come out thinking that I want to be a violent person. I mean, even animal for that matter. If you just endure that film, it's a very interestingly made film. There. And I, this your choice of word endure is no, I, 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 that says it. Yeah, I, 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 I loved it. Okay, and I speak because I, I'm looking at man's reactions there. So I'm just saying, if if you endure it, because uh, it is something which. Uh, <laughs> Actually, I should not be talking because I can't be digging my own grave here. <laughs> but I, I feel it's one of the most uh, innovative and cinematic films in the last 20 years. I, I don't think that there has been a comparison. Or, see, what happens in cinema is that most of the characters base their, uh, most of the actors base themselves on something. Like if you meet Anil Kapoor, Anil Kapoor is such a throwback to the olden years that he talks about himself in the third person. Yeh Anil Kapoor kaise kare? <laughs> Anil Kapoor's fans weren't like that. Anil Kapoor's style was like Shahid Kapoor was the original choice for Ranjana. And he was almost locked in zero. And I know this because I know the writer very well. So the writer and the director are just about to say bye to Shahid and come out. And Shahid says one thing which just makes them convinced that he is going to He says, Heroin is going to Shahid is going to They said, Hey, Rene, we will get somebody else. So, uh, there is, there are very few films where the redemption factor is not there. Even in Ganga Jamna, Ganga Jamna, the Dilip Kumar breakdown in the end is something that he insisted on putting in the script. That, that I have a great responsibility, I can't be telling young people that take up arms. So he keeps saying, Mujhe maaf kar do, humka, humse bahut badi galti ho humka maaf kar do. So, I don't think that we are justifying violence. I could be wrong. I, I don't have all the answers. But if we were justifying uh, <laughs> violence and the kind of popularity that people like Amitabh Bachchan enjoyed or Dharamji enjoyed or, or the Khan enjoyed, then every Shah Rukh Khan fan would be throwing people off the buildings and not trying to think, you know, let's earn some money so that I can go to Europe and I can stand in Germany next to that lake where Shah Rukh Khan has, you know, stands in. So, there is a dichotomy there. Uh, has the, I'm not saying the violence of cinema does not inspire. My book on Pink, where I talk about women in Hindi cinema, starts with an example that an Indian guy in Australia uh, started stalking a girl, uh, an Australian girl, I think. And the city magistrate, when, when this guy was arrested and presented to the city magistrate, he said, it's my culture. Yeah. My culture teaches me to do that. So he said, what are you saying? You're from India. What culture is that? <laughs> and he, he ranted off all Hindi films and Tamil films. And he showed, ye dekho, ye dekho, ye dekho. I mean, Amir Khan had a film called Divana Mutsa. He said, I'll come back to you, I'll come back to you, I'll come back to you, I'll come back And today, Amir Khan can say, yeah, you know, I mean, women are more powerful. Right? <laughs> and Amir Khan's wife can say that Animal is a very violent film. But what was Khambe Jassi Ghadi? What was Dil? No, it does. And also, I, I think there's a subtle message in Animal. A lot of people have not seen the connection between so Godfather. And a lot of people have not seen how Animal could be about India today. You know, there are people attacking <laughs> India. And what lens will you go to save India? So, I have, you can read it any which way. But I could be wrong. Yes, there is a possibility that <laughs> films will be very wrong. May I just... Sir, one second. Sir, sir, can I just interject one second, please? You know, there's going to be no end yeah. to this. And we're getting late for the next session. I did promise Mr. Arora he will be available, sir. After this. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, quick. No, no. Three. Okay. So, sir, Mr. Arora, if you could just. So, I just want to ask uh, something about the soft power on macro energy. Because generally speaking, the dominant economic and military powers of the world of the civilization, they are the ones who have typically been kind of having the dominant cultural imperialism of the world. Uh, and of course, uh, after the demise of colonialism, cultural imperialism became a much more potent weapon than anything else. Uh, now, being in this particular sphere, do you feel, see that there is going to be some shift, very small or in some uh, uh, over a period of time, when the dominant uh, Western political, uh, Western culture, which started say with the Renaissance and all? And ultimately, it is giving way to some other uh, alternate soft powers, and which are going, to, which are those going to be? In your opinion, so sure. everyone in definite answer on that. I, I think there is a very big shift. Uh, if you look at uh, 
climate warriors, for the lack of a better term, who are designating great works of art all over the world. I don't know why they're doing that. Why are you going and throwing paint? I think it's it's a two-pronged thing. Ek to you need new artistic cultural heroes. So if you don't let go of the past any which way, you may not find the new ones. And I think that that change that you're talking about has already happened. Today, you don't talk of, you talk of India in a very different voice. And when you're looking at culture and cultural soft power, uh, Pakistan had a very strong policy on cultural soft power. I mean, the singers, the cricketers, they were brand ambassadors despite whatever Pakistan was doing as an official policy. In 2015, there was a document which he said it. The one which is going to be the dominant so the, part, the, part in the days to come. Yeah, so I think the space is still up for grabs. I am very fairly confident that India is a major player there. Because the kind of revival of Indian culture that you see, and also the attacks on Indian culture which has, which has started across the world. That space is still up for grabs. Uh, there is a lot of flux. Definitely America is being challenged. Europe is being challenged. So the traditional uh, cultural powers are going to stake a claim for them. So you will see a kind of revival of Japanese literature which is already happening. You are seeing a kind of a modern revival of Indian culture where you have the past and the present walking very beautifully when it comes to culture and comes to, I mean Suman's book is an example of that. I mean you have a, a timeless tale retold in a, in a modern way and people are lapping it up, the younger generation is lapping it up. So there are many examples like this where the space is still up for grabs. And that is what makes this a very interesting video. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.